welcome to the Auto Trading Live Strategy Session with Jeff Tompkins. This is your host, Richard Van Rich, and we have Craig Ward with us in chat. We're really excited to have you guys with us here this week. We've got a lot of information to go over. Markets are crazy right now, and we want to get right into it. If this is your first time on, you'll notice that your microphones are muted, and so we can all hear Jeff and I talk. But there is a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. If at any point in time you have any questions, just uh, put questions in there, and we'll get to those throughout the evening. That's my seven-year-old avoiding bedtime. Sorry about that. All right. Before I bring on Jeff, I also want to let you know that uh, if you have any questions about your access to trade trend, anything about your uh, trade alert services, anything like that, email support at altostrading.com and we'll get to those uh, throughout the evening. If you have to hop off for any reason, don't worry. This is recorded and will be available in the members area later tonight and also on YouTube sometime tomorrow. And if you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe so you can catch more of our videos every week because we do these every Tuesday at 7. So before I bring on Jeff, let me just read Altos Trading LLC and Trade Transilian software is intended to be used as information service for subscribers and includes opinions as to buying, selling, and holding various stocks and business securities. However, publishers of Altos Trading, Trade Transilian software are not brokers or investment advisors, do not provide investment advice or recommendations directed to any particular subscriber or in view of the particular circumstances of any particular person. Altos Trading LLC, including its owners, do not accept responsibility for any decisions made by subscribers using the software and subscribers to the trade trend size zillion software. Any other persons who buy, sell, or hold securities should do so with caution and consult with a broker or investment advisor before doing so. All right. With that being said, we bring on Jeff. Jeff, can you hear me? Good evening, everybody. How's it going? Good. Good, good. Sorry about uh, tech technical camera issues again. You guys don't have to look at my ugly mug tonight. Only the screen. You got Richard, yeah, look at Richard's, mine. <laughs> Richard's pretty face on there, but not mine. So sorry about that. I'm sure everyone's disappointed. I'm sure. Um, yeah, so all, all is good. Hope, hopefully with you guys, it's it's uh, another timely session with crazy market conditions. I've seen a dramatic risk reversal. Risk is back on in the market. And we've seen two really big uh, up days in the uh, major indices. So uh, another good uh, kind of serendipitous timing situation where uh, we're or actually kind of hit uh, a very major resistance level on the S&P and NASDAQ, particularly the S&P uh, today that we're going to look at. Um, so we'll start with that. Uh, and then uh, got a really, you know, well, oh, also to mention, because um, we, we've been looking at the 36-month moving average um, each week. Uh, that also coincides, this resistance uh, level, the horizontal resistance level coincides with uh, the 36-month moving average as resistance since we broke that and closed below last month. So we'll we'll emphasize that as well. Take a look on the chart. Um, and they got a really great, uh, fun strategy session tonight um, that, that's new and we haven't covered before uh, regarding how to use price action pivots to forecast trends. So it's a, it's a great uh, price action uh, setup that you guys can use for forecasting trend direction. It's very reliable and uh, works across all time frames. Uh, no indicators needed. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about using it with trade trend though, because uh, it, it's a great way to filter trade trend signals as well. Um, so I'm really excited to, to share the strategy tonight, which is uh, price action pivots. Um, very clear rule-based uh, system and setup for identifying whether markets are likely to go up or down and can also be applied to any asset class as well as any time frame. So I like uh, that would be our focus tonight. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's exciting. I think, I think, you know, it's, people may have seen it in different variations or maybe not been exposed to this at all. Um, it's rather simple. And if you haven't been exposed to it or haven't used it in your trading and investing decisions, you might, you know, walk away tonight kicking yourself like, why didn't I know about that? How did I not use that before? It's, um, so I think that you guys are going to love it. Um, and we'll go over some exa chart examples and we can look uh, for even for some current examples. And because I think we've missed now two weeks of ticker roundtable because we got so deep into the uh, the, the short uh, strangles the last couple of weeks, um, we missed that. So we'll leave, more, leave time there. Um, this is a very simple, uh, but very powerful uh, system. The, the price action pivots. Uh, so it shouldn't take a whole lot of time. We want to really actually spend most of the time, as far as going over the rules, want to spend most of the time uh, actually applying it to the charts. And we can look at some different timeframes as well. Um, so we'll, 
we'll then kind of uh, transition over to ticker roundtable and then wrap up with with Q and A. Um, all right, so uh, let's go ahead and get over to our charting platform. Uh, looking at, at uh, the S and P five hundred on the daily chart in Zillion, and I mentioned that uh, we have approached a, a strong resistance level. There's actually a, a number of factors taking place here, um, uh, kind of all at the same time. Uh, so I'm going to get my drawing tool here so I can emphasize those. So we've got uh, we, we've got a couple of slingshot setups that which we you know have also gone over and call volatility expansions um, since this rotation lower from the mid August highs. Um, so we've seen a couple of these here, and this one just uh, really played out today, where we get um, a volatility expansion and then a rebound to the level of the initiation of the volatility expansion, um, which also coincides, and we uh, I believe, let's see what the actual high on the SPX was today, a um, little bit, little bit below about. Eight, eight, slightly over eight points below the 3,800 level. Uh, but, but that century mark at the 3,800 level is our strong resistance. Okay, so uh, really for three factors, um, if you look at, again, the slingshot volatility expansion rebound here that uh, actually took place only over two days, which is uh, pretty incredible because you can see how many days from where it started here on this candle uh, it took us to get down into the 3600 zone, um, and it only actually took us a couple uh, days to get back up. Um, so that's one factor. And then we've got other past uh, support at this 3800 level. So from back in mid-May, you'll see that we had this uh, bullish reversal candle that re uh, propelled prices higher up into the 4100, 4200 resistance zone. Um, we've also got some resistance here. And then of course, century mark. And then the third one is, is the 36 month moving average, which we'll take a look at here momentarily. Uh, so uh, we, we've been, and you'll recall, we emphasized this, I believe uh, last week, um, to look for a reversal off this support zone down here and played out quite nicely. Let's see that we had uh, that prior to was last week, um, the previous all-time lows for the year were mid-June. Um, so we retested those and we've rebounded from them, which is uh, what we uh, mentioned on our session last week. If we get a close above the resistance zone, um, we anticipate a move back up into the 3,800 level. So it played out exactly as we analyzed last week. Um, we got the close above and then the rebound back up into. Um, actually, I'm gonna add a fourth thing here that we really wanna watch for as well this week. Um, You'll notice I've got the Bollinger Bands uh, plotted on the chart. Uh, when we get these volatility expansions to the downside and then a rebound, um, we want to really watch the setter band closely for resistance. Uh, that often can serve as can serve as a resistance level, um, which, as of the close today, resides a little above 3,800. But that could, uh, you know, this will come down a little bit more tomorrow. So uh, keep a very close eye. If we do get some more buying. Uh, and we'll look at the futures tonight and actually apply the price uh, price action pivot system to futures since it's a live market and it's open right now. Um, uh, if we get you know more buying in the futures overnight and then we get a move up uh, to some degree tomorrow, uh, really watch for resistance at the center band because um, that's what happened on the last volatility expansion slingshot. So see, we've got our, uh, our volatility expansion sell-off, the rebound, um, and then we exceeded the uh, point where that expansion initiated, get the outward uh, uh, diverging bands, volatility bands, rebound. And then we went up into this, to the center line, the mean, and then big sell off. So always be a little bit cautious uh, when we get up into the center band. I like to wait to see if there's going to be follow through. Um, and that typically would consist of like a couple closes. Um, above uh, the, the band. So uh, over the course of a couple of days on the daily chart, um, 
a move up uh, or a close up above the band that is in kind of more art than science um, is significantly above the band, like maybe up in the 3,900 plus level versus this one back here where we just closed slightly above the band um, and probably faked out a lot of, a lot of people that thought we were, you know, rebounding uh, up into the upper band, which didn't obviously happen. We rotated lower from there. Um, so watch it closely. And then the other thing you can do is just wait and see, you know, um, are we going to reject this band today and tomorrow? Um, give it a couple days because look what happened here back in September. Um, or, you know, are we going to follow through? And if we do follow through, then, um, and that'll probably be more in getting into our session next Tuesday, uh, but possibly, you know, with with the strong uh, buying that's going on right now due to, you know, decreasing um, fears of aggressive Fed action and, and things um, uh, and, and treasuries and things like that, that are the catalyst for this uh, current rebound that we're in. Um, we'd be looking at resistance around 4,000 um, and definitely uh, very strong res resistance around 4,100. But again, that's probably not going to come into play until next week. So, uh, but if it, if it happens sooner, just be aware of those resistance levels. If we get a follow through past the center line um, and th the mean, and we trade higher up into the, these uh, resistance uh, areas. Um, so let's also look at the monthly uh, S&P chart, because that's where that other component comes in as far as dynamic resistance. So we've got a very strong close uh, below the 36 month moving average last month into September and found some support right around the 3600 century mark. Um, got some buying and but um, the the uh, 36 month moving average level is just slightly above our resistance level at 3,800, our century mark. So um, see how you can see the confluence here of the 36 month moving average resistance, the horizontal resistance on the daily chart at 3,800, um, as well as the, um, the Bollinger Band uh, volatility expansion resistance. So we've got a lot of resistance at 3,800 uh, to overcome. So that's that's the very near term level to watch for resistance to give us a uh, more clear direction uh, of the magnitude of this rebound and whether it's, and probably is more of a, a bear market rally. Um, but we lost a lot, uh, you know, it was a rough month in September. We lost a lot on the major indices. So probably seeing, you know, some of that overreaction unwind um, at, at these, lower levels of support, like around 3,600. Um, so again, really closely watch 3,800. Um, and then also um, the center the center band on, back over to it here, um, on the uh, Bollinger Bands, which is not much above 3,800 on the close today. It's right around 3,825 at the quarter century mark. So again, uh, I expect we'll probably see some degree of resistance here, um, given the confluence of all these uh, both static and dynamic uh, factors of resistance across those things that we've looked at. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. Let's now look at the NASDAQ 100 ETF, the Qs. and see what's going on here. So we see a similar picture as we did on the S&P. Um, we've got, so here was the first volatility expansion sell-off into support. There was the rebound. We found resistance right at the uh, center band. That's why, again, you wanna be very careful about uh, sell-offs and then subsequent rebounds into the center band because that, especially with all three bands uh, center and outer bands pointing downward that it has a high likelihood of serving as dynamic resistance and then uh, seeing the, the, the market rotate lower from that level. Um, and you'll notice, and again, it's so, so important to look for confluence. You'll notice we've got other areas of resistance um, right where this 
center band resided at the time. Um, and then we get another one, right? So there's another, so this one start, this volatility expansion started um, technically right here on this candle, but um, you'll see that price trailed the lower band for a number of days. And then we came into support. So there was our support. And then we rebounded up into where that volatility expansion initiated. So, uh, so we're at a, uh, a horizontal resistance level, kind of right around 283 uh, today. So again, we, we could get a break of that tomorrow based on overnight futures uh, price action and such, but uh, we've got fairly nearby uh, resistance to contend with at the center band. And again, we've got all three bands, outer, two in the middle, pointing downward, sloping down. And we've got um, more horizontal uh, resistance. Uh, kind of right around, let's see what the le exact level is here. Uh, right around 286 to 286.50 on the queue. So um, again, we've, we see a lot of horizontal support resistance. Um, right at this level that coincides with the middle band. So again, if we if we make it up here uh, tomorrow or in the next couple of days, uh, be cautious. Um, it could be you know a potentially good profit taking levels for long positions um, and potential short opportunities if we see rejection of that center band and then a rotation back lower. Um, so uh, in the context of those things we're going to look we're going to look at this in the context of the VIX. So um, let's pull up a chart of the VIX. And also we we talked about this last week to help us time that reversal that just happened over the last couple of days back to the upside. We had more confluence uh, with uh, VIX price action and levels. So um, la on our session last Tuesday we emphasized the uh, resistance zone to watch for which was between about 35 to 39. Back over the last couple of weeks, we've really been emphasizing, uh, watching for a reversal off this level for, uh, you know, as, as uh, the S&P and NASDAQ reverse off support levels back and rotate back to the upside. Um, and so that played out uh, just as we analyzed uh, last week. So there was the, the rejection and reversal lower on uh, this particular candle. Um, and now we're seeing mean reversion on the, uh, the VIX. Uh, so also check this out. There's support right around 28 on the VIX, prior resistance that coincides with the middle uh, band. So again, just because the VIX uh, is inversely cor correlated, works opposite of the S&P, uh, tends to go down when the S&P goes up. Uh, if we see the VIX hold this 28 level and rotate higher, and we see the S&P uh, hit that middle band on the Bollinger Bands in that resistance zone and rotate lower, that is um, a strong indicator of the, uh, you know, a resumption of the, the, uh, the move down in the market. So, resumption of the sell-off that we were in in September. So really uh, now is a critical time to really watch these levels that are very nearby current uh, prices on the S&P, the NASDAQ and the VIX. Um, and the, our topic for tonight, which is price action pivots, is a, is a great tool we're gonna add to this analysis um, to help us uh, uh, further and even find more confluence in um, some of these reversal points. So that can be very uh, helpful. Um, as well as just a great standalone uh, setup and system for forecasting uh, price trends and, and direction. Um, so those are our major levels to watch in the S&P, NASDAQ, VIX. Um, any questions, Richard? We can move it into to our uh, system for tonight. Yeah, Chris had when he was wondering if you ever pay attention to gaps, like do you look at gaps being filled? Do you see them as being important or ignore them? Or what you, what's your take on those? Yeah, I mean, I, I look at them and a lot of the gaps, obviously, in the, well, the gaps in the the major indices like the S&P and the NASDAQ are a result of overnight futures trading. So like if you look at, um, let's get back over here and look at a, 
let's see, let's go to a daily chart. Let's keep that. I'll remove the moving average here. So like when you see, uh, you know, big gaps like this on the S&P, uh, in this case, gap down, um, you know, it's because of, so this was on, uh, you know, June 9th, 10th, and the 13th, so Thursday, Friday, Monday. And then we go over to the E-mini S&P futures. Um, while you can get some gapping in those, because um, they close briefly uh, in, the, in the evening, uh, but otherwise are pretty much a 24-hour market. So you don't have those gaps here on June 9th. A um, little bit of one on Monday because this is, and if you do get them, they tend to be over the weekend. Um, but day to day during the weekday, you don't get the gapping. So uh, the futures uh, pricing precedes the the movement in the for the e mini S and P futures, the ES, the movement in the SPX. So if we get sell off in you know in in the ES, the e mini futures, um, and the prior day or overnight uh, to the market open in the US, you're going to see the S and P gap down. Um, so that's why I like to, you know, use the futures as a tool that, um, and we'll, we're going to get into some more futures sessions. Um, cause even if you don't trade in, in the futures in the future, <laughs> futures sessions in future, uh, uh, Altos live weekly sessions, because, um, even if you don't trade the futures, they're a, a great tool for, uh, analyzing, um, uh, the markets, but they're also a great tool for hedging because you have, you know, round the clock access to trade them. So, you know, if you get in a situation where, you know, maybe you, you want, to, want to hedge it open long position in your portfolio, but the markets are closed and you're vulnerable to whatever the market opens up at the next day and you get a gap, well, the futures can be used. Um, and I actually just have done this this week or more, more last week. Um, I was hedging on that sell-off last week um, as, the, as the ES was going down because I have long positions in some of the... Um, uh, the uh, index ETF products. Uh, so I was hedging using futures. So you can sell sell the futures in short to hedge um, long. So we'll, we'll get into that uh, more in future sessions. Uh, but yeah, as far as gaps, that's where you're going to you know generally see those in the index products like the SPX and uh, the NASDAQ, but also with single stocks. Um, and so gaps are you know a topic for another day. And uh, a complex one in, in terms of how you trade them and uh, how you analyze them. Um, and there's lots of different kinds of gaps. Uh, so I'll just give a brief, like my brief uh, kind of experience with them. And so I, I know about, obviously know about them. I, I know how they're used. I know, you know, for instance, if you see uh, gapping on a, on a chart, you know, that some people will say, well, the gap's going to fill um, in other words, you know, if it, we get a gap down, eventually the asset will come back up and fill that gap, um, which is uh, definitely not always true. Um, or, you know, if we get a gap in a direction, there's, you know, a school of thought that we're going to get a continuation of the move in that direction uh, in the near term. So there's all these things that, you know, different ways to analyze gaps. Um, so, of course, we got a big one today at the open in the morning because of what the overnight futures, right? So there's no gap here in the E-mini S&Ps. These were traded from uh, closed to open, 24 hour around the clock market. Um, so you don't see a gap there, but you see it here because of the futures uh, uh, price action. So, uh, you know, what does that really mean? Well, uh, I think it really is dependent on the asset, you know, um, what caused the gap? Was it, you know, uh, some catalyst like a quarterly earnings release, or um, was it more of a broad market reaction that impacted, you know, an individual stock? So it, it really comes down to, you know, what was the catalyst? How, how do you interpret it? Um, which direction was the gap in? How big was the gap? Was it into support or resistance? All these things that make it complex way to analyze, um, but definitely not easy to trade. So in terms of my experience, you know, and I, I don't trade gaps. Um, I know a lot of people do, but they're not easy uh, because it's difficult to determine 
the significance of the gap and what the, the asset's going to do um, based on the gap. So um, we can get into that more when we, uh, you know, as a separate topic, but um, I would say generally, you know, especially as it relates to the indices, when we see gapping in one direction, um, and be because as I showed you, that's due to the futures, um, it's indicating generally stronger directional movement. So like here, when you see gapping to the downside, we get a big move down. And then today we see gapping to the upside. So we're more likely to get a big move up. And we've been getting these big daily moves to the upside uh, this week, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, so uh, in terms of just broad analysis, that's one way to kind of look at it. Awesome. All right, that's all I got. All right, cool. So um, let's get into price action pivots. Actually, I'm going to go back to the um, E-mini S&P futures. And we'll use this as an, a kind of an example. Um, so what is a price action pivot? Well, what we're looking for is we're looking for um, significant turning points in a trend. Okay, so if you just kind of look you know, we're looking at a daily chart right now. We'll look at intraday timeframes as well because it really is irrelevant which time frame you're looking at. It, it works the same. But as you kind of, we're, we're zoomed out here. We're looking at an entire year of daily candles on the E-mini S&Ps. So if you just look, out, look at this from a high level, it's pretty easy to spot where these big turning points are, right? Um, it's... It's not real difficult to see these, but we're going to look at why these types of uh, pivot points, as I call them, are, are so significant and how to actually uh, determine the ones that are more likely to, to result in some of these more, you know, bigger, more sustained directional moves. So, you know, these ones that I've just highlighted um, all resulted in uh, some pretty significant moves. Right. Um, so wouldn't it be nice if you could use some, you know, basic rules to identify these? Um, and certainly when we add in other uh, tools that we've, we've used and learned in the past or indicators like our trade trend indicator, um, they can be uh, really great high probability directional forecasting tools. Um, but and the beauty of, of the the rule based system I'll, I'll show you here is um, it doesn't require any indicators to start. So you can actually use this as a standalone uh, analysis tool for these types of pivot points. Um, and I mentioned on any time frame, they they play out. Um, virtually identically across all time frames. So let's go over the how to I kind of showed you from a high level what these look like and they're easy to see um, without even knowing what the exact rules are, which we'll go over here, but um, they're, they're not difficult to, to spot on, from a high level zoomed out on a chart. Uh, and then once you understand the rules, uh, the, the nice thing is there's no guesswork behind it. Um, and they're, they're, it's a very specific rule set that gives you either an indication of uh, an up, you know, a, a, a supply pivot, which would be here, or a demand pivot, which would be here. So we will see um, when there's excess supply, we'll see uh, supply pivots and, and generally a, a, a sell off or move down. Um, when we see demand pivots, we'll generally see um, you know buyers come in and, and push prices higher. Uh, and so then once you understand the rules, it's quite easy to spot these. Um, and uh, and then we'll go over kind of the rules I use to take positions on them. Um, and uh, they can be you know used with option strategies and um, or just for simply trading shares of the asset. Um, so let's go over, we'll just use this one. It's a very obvious supply pivot, price action pivot. So I'll zoom in on this and we'll go over the rules, how to 
would we have identified this um, uh, before this actual sell-off um, actually, you know, accelerated and we made this big move down into the 3,900 level. All right, so let me uh, go ahead and zoom in here. All right, so big turning point in the market, right? We've had this big run up in uh, the E-mini S&P futures. We top out um, mid-August. So this is actually, um, you know, after we had the big run up in uh, June, July, August, uh, where we hit a, a high and then rotated down to the lows that we've just recently seen. Um, so what's different here? Um, then maybe like, let's, we'll even compare it to this one. Like what's different here than here? The, these are, you know, like shooting stars or dojis where um, at, at the top of a trend that may have indicated to a lot of people that we're going to rotate lower from here, but we didn't, then we moved higher. So what's, di what's different here than here? That's a, where the price action pivot comes in. So let's go over the rules and then we'll, um, we'll look at the difference. So the way to identify, and, and again, we're starting with a supply pivot. So this would be um, like a high pivot point where we'd expect a rotation lower. Um, and then we'll look at it. The rules just are opposite for a demand pivot. So we're, we're making this run up, right? We have uh, higher lows and higher highs. We're in an uptrend. And then all of a sudden, boom. Okay, so what happened here? Um, well, we hit a new high on this candle. Okay, so this is our high. And then prior to that, we were in an uptrend. So we've got, we wanna look, uh, regardless of our time frame. so kind of try to forget about the time frame for right now, just think about the candle. So in this uptrend, so for a supply pivot, you're always going to have it after a move up in the security, right? After an uptrend. So we've got our high on the, and so we want to look two candles to the left for a supply pivot. And then we're going to look at two candles to the right. So we've got our high on this candle that's lower than the high on the candle closest to the pivot candle, right? Um, so at this point in time, let's just, you know, forget about everything to the right of our pivot candle. We only know it on this particular day that we have a, a, a series of low of uh, higher highs leading up to this candle. Okay. So we've got um, this candle here where uh, to the left, our high is lower and to the left of that candle, our higher high is lower. And then something changed on this red candle. And by the way, this doesn't, the, this next candle to the right of the pivot doesn't matter what color it is. In fact, it doesn't matter what color any of these candles are. Um, so another key thing, don't worry if it's a red or a green candle, if it's a bullish or a bearish candle. All we're doing is looking at the high of the candle. Um, same thing will apply to the demand pivot for buying opportunities. All right, so something changed here. We get, we get another new high, so this is our high pivot. Then we look to the right of that candle what changed is that the high on the next day was lower than the high on the previous day. So that's what changed here from, we got a higher high than the day before, higher high than the day before, but then all of a sudden we get a lower high than the day before. Okay, so we're looking two candles to the left of our pivot candle, and then we're looking two candles to the right. Actually, something unique happened here that I'm glad I, because I just, I didn't pre-plan this, I just randomly picked this, um, but I'm noticing something that, uh, is built into the rules, which I'll explain. That's an inside candle. Um, so on this candle, the next day, we have another high that's lower than the, the previous candle to the left of it, All right? So you see this, we've got our high, higher high, higher high, then all of a sudden lower high, lower high. Now this is an inside candle. So with the system, we actually ignore the inside candle. And uh, I'll... I'll explain why, but um, this is still something to, to take note of and pay attention to, but it's an inside candle, meaning that the high and low of this day 
uh, was within the high and low of the previous day. That wasn't a very good line there. Okay. So we're going to ignore this candle. This candle here um, was outside of the range of the candle immediately to the right of the pivot candle. So we're actually going to use uh, this candle as our next tie. We're just ignoring the inside candle. Oh my lines are getting more crooked. All right. So my mouse is a little sticky. There it goes. All right. So here we have our supply pivot. And again, the rules are uh, we have a we have a a run up in the asset, making higher lows and higher highs. We that changes on in this case August seventeenth, where all of a sudden we're not making a new higher high. We've made a lower high, so this becomes our pivot candle on August seventeenth. So the pivot candle happened on August sixteenth, but we didn't know it was the pivot candle till the next day, August seventeenth. And that's because once that candle closed, we had a lower high than the previous. And then we're waiting to see uh, for at least one more day, unless we get an inside candle like we did here, um, then we don't have to wait a third day for another lower high. And that happened on August 19th. So now we've got a supply, a price action supply pivot right here. This whole thing is our price action supply pivot. That indicates, especially being we combine it with other factors like horizontal resistance levels in the case of a price action a supply pivot or a horizontal support levels and a price action demand pivot, or we're looking for the mark the, the asset to rotate higher. Um, when we combine these with other, you know, we find confluence with the, those horizontal levels or a Bollinger band or a trade trend signal um, are uh, are quite accurate at forecasting. Um, significant moves in the direction of the, you know, in the case of a supply pivot to the downside or demand pivot to the upside. And of course, in this case, we'll, uh, you know, look at what happened and how we could uh, you know, take trades off this type of setup. So the next thing we look for is the base of the, the price action pivot. All right. So remember, we're using five candles generally. Two to the left, two to the right. Um, if there's an inside candle, we ignore it. So in this case, it played out over six candles. Um, and so this is where it gets a little bit, not, I don't wanna say tricky, but a little different um, in terms of identifying the, uh, the, the, what I kind of call the base of, it's either the base or the ceiling. So it's the base with the supply pivot and a ceiling of the demand pivot. And what we use for that is the low of the candle that completes that pivot. I didn't get that exactly right, but it's basically the low of this candle, the last one in the price action pivot setup. So it's gonna be this candle here because that was our final confirmation that we have a supply pivot and anticipating to move, anticipating to move down. So see this, once this candle completed on uh, what day was that? Uh, August 19th, we've now got our full setup. So on a daily chart, this is gonna take a minimum of what, five days to, to set up. If we're trading intraday, um, you know, let's say on a five minute chart, it's gonna take a minimum of you know, 25 minutes um, to, to set up. On a one minute chart, a minimum of five minutes. So we need to wait for the two candles on the left, two to the right, and then possibly uh, more if there's an inside candle in within the setup. So th this is our base on a supply pivot. So it's going to be the low of this final candle in the setup. And that is at 42.2075. So then if we if we um, are going to you know, trade this setup, we'd be looking for short opportunities, right? Because this is a supply pivot. So we want to look for follow through to the downside. Here we got a lot of fall through to the downside. Um, and so uh, if, you know, we're looking at the E-mini S&P futures. If we're going to, uh, you know, take a short position, we could just sell contracts of the E-mini S&Ps, which would um, put us in a short position to, and a, a position of profit if the E-mini S&Ps sell off. Um, so what I'm looking to do is um, set up a short position just below the low of the base of the supply pivot setup. 
So that would have been, you know, just below the low of this final candle on the setup, which again is at 42.2075. So if we get follow through and we did um, on, on the, the next, this was a Friday. So the next trading day, which was a Monday, the 22nd of August, we get follow through in a sell off, right? Um, so that's our entry criteria. We wait for, because if we don't get follow through, let's say that this follow through didn't occur and we didn't break the low of the final candle on the setup and we this uh, up, uptrend resumed, that rule would keep us out of that trade. So we need at least for the next candle to break the low of the final candle in the, the price action pivot setup. So we get, boom, follow through. Uh, so that's, that's our entry criteria. Um, if we were using an options-based strategy around this, you know, we could use a contingent order to say, you know, let's say we were buying puts. Um, you know, I only want to uh, buy the put contracts um, on the condition that the, uh, the underlying asset, in this case, the E-mini S&P uh, futures, uh, hits a specific price that I specify below the low. So I usually just use, you know, um, I, I don't like to really use an arbitrary number of points. I want to be looking um, at, just like we do with all of our other uh, analysis, right? I want to be looking for support levels in the case of a short supply setup. Um, it's, it looks like it occurred pretty close to this 4,200 century mark. All right, that's actually quite a bit below um, our triggered entry. So I may want to look, you know, um, uh, you know, at uh, potentially waiting for that. You can actually see we came back up and retested and then sold off, um, which is another way to trade. You can, um, if, you, if you're more patient, you really want to wait for extra confirmation. You can um, wait for the, and, and this will keep you out of even more false reversals or false uh, follow throughs and then reversals is wait for the move to actually take place and then for it to retest. And then you also have another high probability entry point um, on, on that continuation of the sell off after a bit of a retracement there. Um, so again, kind of all uh, needs to be taken in the context of uh, your horizontal levels, whether you're um, near or near support on a supply pivot setup um, and other factors if we're using Bollinger Bands or trade trend setups. And we'll look at uh, potential trade certain signals along with these two, because if we get a tr trade trend sell signal near one of these supply pivots, those are great trade trend sell signals. I love those. If we get a, a trade trend buy signal near a demand setup, which we're going to go over next, those are great, um, you know, great signals to take. Um, so before I get to the demand signals, um, so as I mentioned, what was different here? Like a lot of people would have looked at uh, this back here. We've got this big run up. Um, it may even be in a resistance if I zoomed out on the chart, I have to look. Um, but then we get these, um, you know, these dojis and looks like maybe we're, the, the run up is stalling. We're consolidating. We might ro rotate back lower, but then that didn't happen. We made another run up of, you know, a couple hundred points on the E-mini S&Ps. Um, so why was this, let's just say for instance, why was this or even this one, same applies, why weren't these supply pivots? Well, to the left, and actually this is another, uh, another thing to mention, because in this case we had a perfect step. You kind of look at it as a step ladder, right? St perfect step up and then perfect step down. That may not always be the case. That wasn't here. Um, the rules actually are the previous two highs just have to be below the high of the pivot candle. That actually qualified here, even though the high of this candle was above or higher than the candle uh, that was directly to the left of the pivot candle. Still qualifies. It doesn't have to be a perfect step here. Um, this almost would have, it was about to set up as a, as a, upper, as a uh, supply pivot. But what happened? And this would have actually kept us out of this uh, setup if we were thinking it was going to rotate lower, which it didn't, because on the candle that would have completed the pivot setup, we got a high that did not qualify us. It broke the high of this, what would have become the pivot candle if the next candle, let's say, posted a high here or here or here, anywhere below the high of this candle. So boom. Um, and these can also be traded, although topic for another day, um, failed pivots uh, can sometimes be good indication of a resumption of a trend. Um, but same thing happened here, right? So 
Um, we've got, you know, pre previous candles to the left, highs that were lower than our pivot candle. Looks like this thing's setting up for a nice supply pivot with a rotation back down, but this candle ruined it. All right, we broke the high of what would have been the pivot candle and we didn't move lower anyway. So it kept us out of a potential sell-off. And in fact, in this candle, probably tricked a lot of people. Look, there was a lot of selling. This was a doji. I'd you know, without knowing what happened on this particular day, it could have been a lot of catalysts and things, but just based on price action, you know, people could have looked at this doji candle after an up move and been like, oh, we're, we're, we're hitting a new a top. We're going to sell off. There's selling started to come in, probably caught a lot of people short on this candle and then faked them out and moved up. If you use the supply pivot setup, this would have kept you out of it. You wait for this candle and it broke the rules of the supply setup, uh, pivot setup with a high above, right? Because we need to wait for that fifth candle to post a lower high for confirmation. Didn't come in. Same thing with this other example we looked at. So you can see how it could also keep you out of um, a lot of bad directional uh, trade analysis. Um, okay, so uh, let's look at, let's go back here and look at a demand pivot. This one's pretty obvious. Um, when they do, uh, when they do coincide with uh, support levels, so we'll kind of start building that into the uh, equation as well. Um, and like uh, doji type price action that complete the setup, those are particularly good. And you can see how great this one was. Um, so we've got all the support here, right? All right, so um, we've got successive lower lows. So we're in a kind of a downtrend over, um, here's one too, actually, to the downside. So this is now a demand setup. So we've got successive lower lows. Um, we put in a new low right here. Okay, so that's on uh, July 14th. Um, so where do we start looking for the demand price action pivot um, after the next trading day, because that's where things changed. Where we didn't, we no longer made a new successive low, we made a lower or, or a higher low on this particular candle. So now we're getting close to um, the completion of a demand price action pivot. The next candle confirms it. Again, it doesn't matter if it's green or red. This actually was a bearish candle. Another great example of how people get faked out. Bearish candle, selling, gap up, strong sell-off. Oh, we must be going lower. Nope. The price action demand pivot actually uh, negated that. So we've got uh, uh, our two higher lows from our pivot candle. So again, this now becomes our pivot candle. And then our entry, because this is the second candle to the right, would be just above the high of the final candle and the demand pivot, price action pivot. We get the follow through the next day and a big run up. Um, actually, Similar to that supply price action pivot setup we just looked at over here, um, if you were patient and waited for the initial move and then a pullback to the entry level, you had a second opportunity to enter here as well to the long side. So that's a demand price action pivot where we are forecasting the asset to move up in price from a significant uh, level and turning point in the market. So um, those are the setups. We're, we'll go over then the management of, of it, uh, which can be done in a number of different ways. Uh, but some of these are you know, a little harder to see and, and they don't all result in big moves. So management becomes important, management of, an, of a trade off one of these setups, um, but they're all over the place and they're not all so obvious. We looked at two 
you know, fairly obvious ones. Uh, this one is not quite as obvious, but it still was a demand price action pivot. We have a series of lower lows. We put in a low on this uh, candle, this last red candle, and then things change. We put in a higher low. This one looks like without looking at the exact level, like it might've been a little bit lower than the candle directly to the right of the pivot candle, but that's okay. It's higher than our the low from two candles ago. So we've now completed a demand, um, demand pivot, right? And uh, we'd be looking for price to exceed the high of the candle. And the line has got that. Um, and then we get a nice move up here. Okay, this is a supply pivot. Move down. All right, so they're everywhere, right? Here's, an, here's another really nice supply pivot. Here's our pivot candle. Sorry, demand pivot. Now we're looking two candles to the right. We get uh, two subsequent uh, higher lows. Great, nice run up. So um, let's talk a little bit about management. So there's a number of ways to manage it. These are great. This is a great setup to use with option strategies uh, because we don't have to be so precise necessarily with uh, profit target levels of the underlying asset. We can use, uh, you know, uh, percentage profit targets off the uh, options uh, setup or options trade. So, you know, if we're doing like a, a vertical, uh, a bullish vertical debit spread on a demand price action pivot, you know, we could look for, you know, a 50 to 100% return on our um, investment in the, the vertical options ever. So we don't need to necessarily look so much for exact uh, price levels for profit targets. But if we're just you know, trading shares of the asset, um, we might want to look at, um, you know, obviously look at profit taking levels. So um, I'll give you kind of a couple ways that, that we can do that. We'll just use this one again. So um, we've got our demand uh, pivot, right? So that meets the criteria. We've got, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five candles. It all meets the criteria for a demand reversal uh, pivot point. Um, and then we get the follow through by price breaking above our last candle. Um, generally for stops, stop loss levels, if I'm just trading shares of the asset, um, there's three really three levels of stops you could use. Um, more aggressively, you could use the low of the fifth candle in the setup as your stop loss. You could use the low of the fourth candle, just below, you know, slightly below the low of that candle as your stop. Or um, more conservatively, you can use the low of the lowest candle. Um, I prefer to use either the fourth or fifth candle low because if we get a failure of this setup, um, it's much more likely that we're going to, the whole thing's going to collapse and we're going to hit this low anyway. So I'd rather use a tighter stop. If we start to break, candle four or five in the setup, um, then we're looking at higher probabilities of hitting the pivot candle low or high in the case of a supply pivot uh, setup. So um, based on your stop, and let's say we're using um, the fifth candle in the setup, which is this uh, candle here. Um, what I typically like to do um, for managing an open trade off this setup is look at the range of the fifth candle in the setup, so high to low, and um, and then our entry, you know, would be just above the high of this candle, uh, and then use a uh, one to one uh, risk reward ratio. So if our risk is X number of points here with our stop down here, um, we'd want to. Uh, set our profit target the same number of ticks or points uh, above our entry price. So we're basically using a one-to-one -one risk reward. Um, and this system has uh, enough of an edge based on the accuracy of the, the forecast of direction um, that uh, it has a positive expectancy um, most of the time just by using a one-to-one -one risk reward. Uh, now, since a lot of these 
price action pivot points can result in lar- a very sustained and strong directional moves, um, we may want to use uh, a higher profit target if you're more aggressive or a scaling out technique where we maybe close half of our position at profit target one up here, which again is equidistant um, to the upside as our stop is to the downside from our entry price. Uh, and then uh, move our stop to our break even point, which again would be right around our entry down here at this level. Uh, and then manage, you know, if I don't know, I'd have to look at the highs and lows here if we actually came down and would have been stopped out on this candle. But, um, you know, if so, then we took profits on the first half and then we moved our stop to break even and we profited on the overall position, but may have been stopped out. If it didn't, um, then we had a continuation of the, the move up and we can manage that with um, by placing um, another profit target level using the same number of ticks that we use in our stop loss and our profit target level one, um, or we can use a trailing stop level. Um, one, one way to, to do that is just to move your stop up to the low of every, just below the low of every candle um, on, the, on the move up. Um, or if we're using trade trend um, as further confirmation, like if we're looking for uh, you know, long trades off a of buy signal with a demand pivot set up um, with trade trend, then uh, we can use the trade trend trailing stop algorithm to manage the trade. So there's a few ways to kind of manage uh, the open positions. So I just threw a lot of information at you um, in a short amount of time. I'm going to pause there for questions. Um, and then I want to I want to leave maybe you know 10 extra minutes uh, to do some ticker roundtable, and we can p- potentially look at some of these on uh, any tickers you guys want to see. So, uh, Richard, any questions? You answered actually a lot of them um, as as you went along. Everyone thought it was very thorough. There's probably a dozen comments in, in in the question box and the chat box is saying how great uh, they think the strategy is. They appreciate you showing all these different examples. Um, last question that came through was about stop losses, which you covered. Um, I'll, I'll ask, um, you see this, there was a question Stephen asked, and then you maybe already called it. But, uh, so does the second candle on the supply setup to the right of the peak pivot candle have to be lower high than the previous candle or a lower high than the peak pivot candle? Uh, good question. So lower higher than the peak, the, pit, the pivot candle. So like, um, let me see if I can find an example. Um, Yeah, I'm not seeing any red off this chart. Um, but yeah, it just needs to, like here was a, a supply pivot. So this is where we'd be forecasting for a move down, right? So we've got our, um, we're getting the run up and to the left, higher highs, we make a new high here. So this is not yet our pivot candle, not yet. But now it might be on the next, the next day, right? Because then we've got a lower high. Um, in this case, the, the, the fifth candle on the pattern looks like it was lower than the previous day, but let's say it wasn't. Let's say this candle, uh, the fifth one in the pattern, may, you know, moved up and made a high up here. It still qualifies. But the key is we want to use the low of wherever that this, this fifth candle in the pattern, uh, because this is a supp- uh, price action supply pivot setup, we want to use the low for our confirmed entry. Yeah, follow up question on the three red candles on seven twenty three. Isn't that a supply pivot break to the downside? Uh, sorry, say that a little bit slower one more time. On the three red candles on seven twenty three. Seven twenty three. One two three. There. Um, isn't that a supply pivot break to the downside? Uh, it's a supply setup, but it didn't follow through. Another good example of why we want to use the the base again. What I call the base or the floor of the supply setup or the ceiling. As our entry, so this this was a supply uh, price action supply pivot setup. It qualified, so we've got higher highs, changed. Um, actually, by the way, this one no, I take that back. It didn't qualify. This was an inside candle. But let's just say it wasn't. All right, let's just say that one was not an inside candle. Then otherwise, this would have qualified. Um, it actually didn't because of the inside candle here. But let's say it was. Well, our entry would have been below the low here. So if we were, um, you know, 
ignoring the rules and like, okay, we're going to go short at the close of this candle, we would have gotten crushed, right? We would have gotten reversed, would have gone the opposite direction we had hoped for and we would have lost money. But by placing a uh, our entry below the low of the fifth candle, we're only getting in if there's follow through, just an added layer of confirmation. Now, in this case, that inside candle negated that. Um, we would have needed this, this final candle here um, that actually ended up breaking that and, and causing that not to be a, a supply uh, price action pivot um, because it, the high, it made a high above what would have been otherwise been the pivot candle. Because again, we're ignoring this inside candle. Um, we need to see uh, uh, at least two candles to the right of a supply pivot candle, which again would have been this one if it had followed through, um, that have lower highs than that pivot candle. Um, these both have lower highs, but the candle directly to the right of what would have been the pivot candle was an inside candle. Remember, we ignore those. So then when this plant candle completed, um, it still could have been a, a supply pivot setup, but it this candle right here negated that because it then went through and broke and made a new high. Remember I said another way to trade these, and we can maybe get into this in more detail uh, in another session, is on a failed setup. That often is what results in a resumption of the uptrend. So see how we're in this uptrend? Looks like we're getting, um, we were one candle away from getting a confirmed supply pivot sell setup that was that failed on the fifth candle. Those um, also can be traded to the upside as a failed supply pivot. Why? You're actually jumping the gun a bit on a demand pivot. Because what happened here? Right, we've got, and, and this is actually a good follow-up to that question, because this one, um, so again, we're ignoring this candle, inside candle, but we've got two highs, or sorry, two lows that are higher than this pivot candle. So this is our pivot candle. And then to the right, we've got two higher lows. That's a demand pivot. It's a little harder to see, but that is a demand pivot. But since, see how this, what would have been a supply pivot for a forecasted sell-off failed on the fifth candle, but then price moved up. Um, it took till this candle to be a confirmed demand pivot with forecasted move up in the E-mini S&Ps. So we, um, if we want to, you know, take a more aggressive approach, we, we would have jumped the gun by one candle on this, but also got in at a much lower price by using the failed demand, or sorry, failed, failed supply pivot as our entry for a long trade. So it's another way it can be traded. Uh, I wouldn't suggest starting out with that uh, as you know, you're learning this and getting more used to it. It's better to you know, get used to the basics right first, and then you can start looking at uh, variations of the strategy. But that, that's one example of a variation. There are others as well that we can cover in other sessions, but stick to the basics for now. Just look for the basic rules um, and, and, and you can use those um, you know, to, to make forecasted directional moves. Um, so this was, uh, let's see. I'm gonna see if this was a demand pivot. The low was 4144. And, oops, sorry, the low was 40.81. So this is a hard one to see, but this is a demand pivot. So just looking at this, does that look like a big pivot point? Not really, it looks like a bunch of, you know, choppy price action. If you're astute, you would have seen this. So the uh, low on our pivot is 40.80 and a half. And the low on the two candles of the left is just a half Point higher, two ticks higher on the E-mini S&Ps, which move in quarter point increments. So look at this. We've got two candles that have higher lows than our pivot candle, which is this candle here. We have two candles with higher lows to the right. Entry above the high of the fifth candle on the demand pivot. Whoosh, take off to the upside. That's this is a harder setup to see. There's our pivot candle, but that is an actual uh, price action demand pivot. 
with a forecast forecasted move to the upside. Everybody's loving this, man. Uh, Daniel had a really good question. He wants to know if this is fractal. Does this work on other time frames or just daily? Yep. Yeah. So maybe you joined late, but I mentioned earlier, it works on any time frame. Um, in fact, I wouldn't even say that it's stronger on any one particular time frame. Um, so even if we go down to like a five minute chart, um, mark, if you think about it, markets have to move this way to make directional moves, which is kind of the beauty of it. If, if, if they didn't put in these uh, pivot points, they, they wouldn't really be moving anywhere. They just move, rotate sideways forever. Um, so this is just a five minute chart. And, uh, you know, as an exercise, you can just kind of look at the charts and try to find the obvious ones. But here's a great uh, demand pivot, right? Um, I'm actually going to just let me throw a uh, trade trend on here real quick and see if we can. Uh, oops. Uh, find any signals that coincide. All right, this is perfect. Um, so here's a, a demand pivot, right? So five minute chart on the E-mini S&Ps. We've got, we're making lower lows, right? Actually, we don't even need to reference that first one I marked, lower lows. And then everything changed on this five minute candle here where we stopped making lower lows and we made a higher low. Now we're looking for a fifth candle to confirm the demand price action pivot. And there it was. We actually got, although this is in no way programmed into the trade trend algorithm, we got a, a buy signal on that candle as well. Now for trade trend, the entry would have been above the high. Uh, actually, wait a second. Yep, same high. So the entry, I mean, this is like serendipitous to the extreme because uh, although this is this pivot point strategy isn't programmed into our trade trend algorithm, um, it would have worked out with the same rules um, on this buy si signal on this five minute candle. So we've got two candles to the left, two candles to the right. Everything meets the um, the, uh, the the criteria for a demand price action pivot with a forecasted move up um, with a follow entry right around this uh, top horizontal line and follow through to the upside. And if we placed our stop equidistant to the downside on the entry candle, we would have easily hit our one-to-one. -one. Um, if we waited for uh, the move and a pullback, we had another entry opportunity on this retracement and then another move to the upside. So um, there's a good example on a five-minute chart of a demand uh, price action pivot using the trade trend signal is added confirmation. Uh, but yeah, uh, long answer to a short question. The, uh, it works on all time frames, um, and and the nice thing is it can help you stay out of chop like this. You know, there's probably not going to be any real uh, significant supply of demand points, and if, you might see them form and meet the criteria entry criteria, but then they don't follow through. So it also helps keep you out of choppy price action as well. And um, you know, gets you in the the stronger directional moves uh, more so than getting chopped up on a uh, you know sideways channel or you know basically um, you know consolidation of price where you're not getting a lot of directional movement. That's awesome. There's so many comments about people loving this. Yeah, I'm glad you guys. I I knew you guys would love it. Um, uh, you know, it. It's, I think, can make a big difference in you know your not just your analysis, your directional analysis, and your forecasting of price movements, but uh, hopefully in just you know the, you know the way you look at the markets and the assets you're trading, and um, and then your trading decisions as well. You know, because uh, you can actually use these for exits as well. So like if you're in a long trade and you see a supply, um, so you know you're long an asset, and then you see a supply price action pivot, meaning that there's a forecast to move down, it might uh, you know, signal you to, to be aware and maybe take profits on the position or protect it with a tighter stop or all these things. So um, you can use the opposite pivot, a uh, supply price action pivot when you're in long trades or a demand price action pivot when you're in short trades um, to, to manage those positions as well. Um, and actually I was gonna point out on the S&P, uh, the SPX uh, daily chart, um, 
you know, we're potentially in the midst of a supply point here and uh, probably will form one based on where the lower, oh no, actually we just, sorry, we formed one today. Um, I was thinking today, but I was monitoring this and thinking today before the close, but yeah, of course it's after the close. So we, this is now confirmed, um, right? So we've got our uh, two lower, uh, uh, lower lows to the left, our pivot candle, and then our two higher lows to the right with the completion. Um, and, and this is actually a good example of why we want to use, you know, keep an eye on resistance levels. Because remember, we just looked at that very strong resistance area right around 3,800. So this is one I would, um, as kind of a more of an anecdotal case, you know, really wait for um, a follow through or confirmation. So I would actually not enter this uh, demand price action pivot because of this resistance level. I would wait for it to see if it actually occurs and then take the more conservative approach I mentioned on those other examples and then see if we get a pullback into support and then maybe look at uh, taking long positions if that, if that follow through uh, takes place. Uh, so again, you, you don't wanna just, ideally as you're practicing, you know, uh, just look for the setup to start out and just practice finding these. But um, once you do, you know, you're, you don't wanna take them blindly. You wanna really be looking for uh, your, you know, your, your horizontal support and resistance levels um, and taking the, you know, uh, uh, demand price action setups off support and supply price action uh, uh, pivots off of resistance. Awesome. Um, shoot, we always run so, so far over. I, I, I'm gonna keep my promise. We'll take, let's just take a couple uh, tickers if you guys wanna stay on for a few more minutes. Um, so I, you know, perhaps we can look at these and find examples on some couple tickers you guys wanna look at. So let's just take, maybe we could take two um, I see Ari put in Euro US dollar. Let's actually look at that because um, you can, you know, of course, use these on uh, currencies, it work, you know, any asset class. Um, and unless you guys specify otherwise, I'm just going to, you know, look at the daily chart. But if you guys want to look at intraday, make sure to put that in the chat. Um, okay. So we just recently on the, the Euro US dollar daily chart um, had a nice demand setup, right? Demand uh, price action pivot. So we're, you know, we've got we had this big move down. Um, and this is also a good example of the inside candle. So we've got lower low, lower low. We're gonna ignore this candle because it's inside the high and the low is within the high and the low of the previous candle. So just pretend it's not there. Um, we make another low low, a new low. Uh, let's see, on September 28th. So now the next trading day rolls around and everything changes. Got a, a new higher low. Then, so now this is our potential pivot candle right here, but it's not our pivot candle yet. We need to wait for that fifth candle to make a new higher low. There it was. This one actually also coincided with the trade trend signal. There's the, the trade trend buy signal, right? Um, so entry above the fifth candle, and this one's already taken off. It's already in the midst. In fact, it might even have closed at a uh, initial profit target if we used the, the fifth candle stop loss setup. So we're using the range of this candle, putting our stop below the low. Um, it looks like it probably would have already hit the profit target just to end this, uh, just today on this one candle. Um, so now, you know, if let's say we're in a long position on the Euro US dollar or, um, or you know, we're managing an open position or, um, you know, do we wanna go long now? Well, I, I don't wanna go long now because I missed my entry, which would have been way down here. Um, so it's already moved past. So I, do I wanna take any long trades down? No, I, I don't. I wanna be patient and wait for a, supply price action pivot. There's one right there. Entry, boom. Um, so if we're in a long long trade off this setup, we wait for the, the short signal to take place. And then we could look for short opportunities. 
Um, again, does it work on intraday? Yeah, you could go, you know, go down to a, a five minute chart. Right now that, you know, the, the Forex market's quiet because of, of the uh, current trading hours. We're getting an Asian session and then European where it's gonna pick up. Um, but, you know, here's a nice supply pivot setup. Um, this actual, oh, that's an inside candle. Just looking to see. Yeah, so, you know, you can see a lot of these in the five minute chart. Um, the one I really like is this one because, and this is again, as you, as you get experience with these, um, really look for key levels. So see, um, I'm looking at, at this demand price action pivot. See how we had resistance, broke through, came back down and retest in, uh, into that support level, which was prior resistance. We have our two lower lows to the left, our pivot candle, and then our two higher lows to the right. Oh, that's a inside candle. Uh, that one actually looks like it's an inside candle too. So we want to wait till we get a higher low outside of the fourth candle. There it is. There's our entry. Easily hit our initial profit target. Also got a trade trend buy signal there. So see how when these coincide with trade trend buy or sell signals, they often tend to be the good trade trend buy and sell signals. That was a nice one. So that's, uh, that's the price action pivot system on the daily and five minute Euro US dollar chart. Uh, let's take, take one more, Richard. Yeah, Eric asked for Amazon. Okay. okay, let's take a look and see what's happening here. Um, I'm hoping that the, the reason it's nice to do these ticker round tables um, is, you know, every situation is a bit different. So it's nice to see some different um, types of scenarios so I can emphasize those if they're if it doesn't look quite the same um so so i see a so we've got to move down here on amazon we've got we're making lower lows uh then we make uh two lower highs so this is a there's our pivot candle this is a demand price action pivot so we're forecasting to move up in amazon um on a break of the fifth candle which occurred right there. Now, actually, this this uh, does emphasize um, kind of a nuance or variation of in terms of the stop. So let me clear this out. So again, here's our pivot candle. Um, so see how the lows, while it meets the criteria because they're higher than the low of the pivot candle, are fairly close together. So normally, you know, if we're using the aggressive stop approach, we would place our stop below the low of the fifth candle. Um, when you see two candles to the right of your, either your supply or your demand price action pivot, um, and they're not very far from the pivot candle. So see how this is kind of different than like this. This is a uh, supply price action pivot, right? It's an obvious one. And we've got a lot of distance between our right two candles with the uh, entry trigger here, and then the subsequent sell-off, um, where if we place our stop at the pivot candle, we've got a pretty wide stop. The, this is much tighter and more consolidated. When this occurs, I like that's when I do like to use the pivot candle as a stop. Um, if you used the fourth or fifth candle as low as a stop, um, it looks like you may have been stopped out or at least closely, um, and almost certainly by that, that candle there. Um, reason being is um, when you start getting uh, lows that are near each other, that's an indication of um, you know choppy price action or sideways consolidation. So it's better to give yourself a little bit extra room because this one obviously has followed through on the gap up today on Amazon. Um, so when you see the lows of, an, in the case of a uh, price action demand setup, um, close to each other, uh, I like to use the pivot candle as my uh, below that low of the pivot candle as my stop, or on a supply candle. Um, uh, where we're looking, we're forecasting to move down in the asset. 
um, use the high of the pivot candle as your stop. So always gauge, you know, the, your, your risk, and you can always um, adjust your position size and your capital allocation, how many contracts or shares you're trading um, uh, to accommodate your risk um, based on the stop. Um, that's a big mistake people make. They often, uh, they often choose their position size, like, hey, I'm going to buy a thousand shares of Amazon, and then I'm just going to place my stop where I think it makes sense. Uh, that's completely, uh, you know, ass backwards. It's, you don't want to do it that way because then you can exceed your risk threshold. First step is determine where your stop's going to go, then decide on your allocation, your know, capital allocation or your position size, how many contracts, how many shares uh, based on uh, your risk tolerance. So um, when you see a tight uh, lows for a, a price action demand setup, use the pivot candle, um, which was what I would have done if I had taken a buy trade off of this one. So then entry would have been up here. Um, and depending on how far above, I may not have even been triggered on this candle, um, which is a question. I don't know if it's come through yet, but um, I didn't mention, um, maybe a little surprised nobody asked, uh, you know, how long is the setup good for? Um, well, really it's good for uh, until you get an opposing signal. So if you have a, a, a price action demand pivot set up um, and you're still waiting for it to trigger, um, if you get a, a supply uh, price action pivot set up, um, then it would negate the demand one. Um, and uh, that would have happened here except for an inside bar. So it's still valid. Um, and this one uh, probably would have triggered on candle number uh, six. And entry would have been, looks like kind of right around 118. It's already, you know, would have been a few points in profit. With, uh, uh, let's see, the fifth, yeah, your stop. You're going to have kind of a, if we're using uh, the pivot, low pivot as a stop level, um, you know, a bit of a wider uh, a stop range in terms of ticks. Uh, so it doesn't look like we would have quite hit that today. It probably is going to have to move a up a little bit higher to hit uh, the initial, initial uh, profit target level. Um, cool. All right. Well, guys, I, I hope you enjoyed the, the session tonight. Got a lot out of the system. I uh, encourage you to practice it. Obviously, uh, if you're ever going to risk your hard-earned money on anything, make sure you practice, practice, practice before you uh, ever attempt to actually trade it. I know it's uh, tempting to get you know overly excited about it and then jump in and just throw money at it. But please, you know, if you're going to do that, um, always practice first. Um, wait till you get comfortable. It reduces the number of mistakes you'll make and uh, makes you more proficient before you, you risk any harder money and makes you more confident. Um, so really important you know, uh, to go ahead and do that. So let's wrap up with any uh, final questions uh, for the night. Let's see. No, it looks like we're good. I mean, you know, Linda asked earlier if you could show what it looked like on, um, on Zillion, just with the candles, but it's... Oh yeah, yeah, Linda, it shouldn't look too much on Zillion, but... Um much much different, but uh, we'll we'll look at some. Hopefully, you can join us next week. Well, let's do that. Let's look at some more because um, we'll continue to use this analysis. Remember, our our weekly sessions are meant to build on each other every week. So um, that's why even if you're not able to attend, please watch the replays in our YouTube channel um, because we're using information that builds on each other. So um, it's important to stay caught up with what we're you know doing each week, even if you can't attend. Um, and so we'll continue to use the uh, price action pivots in future weekly sessions. So uh, yeah, Linda, let's take a look at that on our Zillion platform next week as well. Um, it's a great, great suggestion. All right, that's all I got. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, guys, for attending tonight. Again, I hope you got a lot out of it. Um, hope it helps you uh, with your trading uh, you know, through the rest of this week and beyond. Um, hope you guys have a great rest of your trading week and watch out for that, uh, that 3,800 resistance zone on the S&Ps for tomorrow. Um, and we'll see you guys all next week, uh, Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern. And uh, hope you guys have a great night. Take care.